Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting functional equation. We are given three times f of negative x plus f of one over x plus f of x equals x, and x does not equal zero for obvious reasons, and we're supposed to find f of x. Now let's see how we can handle this problem. I'm going to be using substitution here, obviously, that's one of my favorite methods. So this is what, we're, what I'm going to do first. I'm going to replace x with negative x. And if I do that, I'm getting something like this. 3 times f of x plus f of negative 1 over x plus f of negative x equals negative x. So that's going to be my second equation. The first one is the original. This is going to be my second equation. And at the end, I'm going to put it all together. Next, I'm going to replace x with 1 over x. And that should give me something like this. 3 times f of negative 1 over x. Plus, if I replace x with 1 over x, 1 over 1 over x is just going to be f of x. And then plus f of 1 over x is going to be 1 over x, since I'm replacing x with 1 over x. And then the third substitution that I'm going to use is replacing x with negative 1 over x. And notice that this makes, this makes sense because I was able to get f of x, but then I got f of negative 1 over x, and I got f of negative x, which I already have in the original equation. So in order to handle f of negative 1 over x, now I'm going to replace x with negative 1 over x. And that's going to give me the following. It's going to give me 3 times f of... As you know here, we're replacing x with negative 1 over x, so that's going to give me f 3 times f of 1 over x. And then plus, if you replace x with negative 1 over x, so it's going to be like 1 over negative 1 over x, that's going to be f of negative x. And then the last part is going to be f of negative 1 over x. And of course, the whole thing is equal to negative 1 over x because we're, repl we're replacing x with negative 1 over x. Okay. So I got like four equations. Let me go ahead and make more replacements here. And then I'm going to write those equations together. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call the first one A. So this is going to be my A. Okay. And then I'm going to call this B. And I'm going to call this C. The only term that doesn't appear here is this one. And I'd like to call that D. So that's going to give me four equations in four variables, and we should be able to solve this. So let's go ahead and write this as a system of equations. So with this type of replacement, I should be getting something like this. 3a plus b plus c equals x, and then 3c plus d plus a equals negative x. And then 3d plus c plus b equals 1 over x. And then finally, 3b plus a plus d equals negative 1 over x. So I got a system of equations in four variables, a, b, c, d. And of course, every equation is given in terms of a, b. Every equation is given in terms of x. So at the end, we're going to find everything in terms of x. Which makes sense, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and number each of these equations so we can handle each one separately. So let's say this is equation number one, this is number two, this is number three, and this is number four. So here's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to be adding all these equations. Let's go ahead and do that first. If you add everything, one, two, three, and four together, then you're going to be getting something like this. You get the 3a plus a plus a, which is 5a. You get the b plus the other b and the plus to the 3b, that's also 5b. So we're going to be getting everything five times. So let's go ahead and write it like this. Five times the quantity a plus b plus c plus d, and the whole thing is equal to zero. Why? Because x and negative x are opposites. One over x and negative one over x are opposites, so, so their sum is zero. From here, I basically get that a plus b plus c plus d is equal to zero. Okay, great. And what does A refer to? You know, A refers to f of negative x, B refers to f of 1 over x, so on and so forth. This also gives us additional information about the function, but that's not super duper important. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and proceed with the solution of this system. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, now I added all the equations and I got 
that the sum ABCD is zero. So that's good information. So let's go ahead and uh, keep that for future reference. But let's go ahead and manipulate more equations. So I'm going to use now number one and number two. Now what is that going to give me? Let's see what happens. So if I go ahead and add number one and number two here, I'm going to be getting something like 3a plus a, right? Which is going to give me 4a. Let's go ahead and write that down. And then uh, I'm going to be getting just 1b, a single b, right? And then I'm going to be getting 4c and then d. And the sum is going to be 0. Why? Because the first and two equations, uh, the first two equations are opposites on the right hand side. Therefore, uh, this is what I'm going to be getting from here. Okay, great. Now, I can, I can take this equation with the, the, this one and kind of write it this way. How about we write this as 3 times a plus c, and then the rest is just going to be a plus b plus c plus d equals 0. Great. I already know that this is equal to 0, which means that this is also equal to 0. Because 3 times a plus c is equal to 0 because their sum with a plus b plus c plus d is 0. So from here we get that a plus c is equal to 0, which is again very important, right? But this also gives us something else. If you plug it in here, if a plus c is equal to 0, that also means that b plus d is equal to 0. Great. Now this allows you to write, you know, one of the variables in terms of the other one. Right? So let's go ahead and do that now. This allows me to write C in terms of A as negative A. So C can be written as negative A and D can be written as negative B. Now, why did I pick those variables? It doesn't really matter. But my goal is to get to A or C somehow. And in this case, I want to get to A since it's the first variable, even though it's not f of x, because from that I can find f of x easily. So it doesn't matter which variable you choose, but you kind of have to stick with something and go for it. Okay, so I was able to express C and D in terms of A and B. Now I'm going to use this in my expression, but let's go ahead and take a look at the equations number one and number four first. Okay, so number one gives me the following. 3A plus B plus C is equal to X. And number four is 3B plus A plus D is equal to negative 1 over x. So what I'm going to do now is take those equations and just add them. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's see what happens. Okay. From here we're getting 3a plus a which is 4a. Then we're getting 3b plus b which is 4b. And then we're get getting c plus d. And then the whole thing again is equal to 0. Okay. Now I do know that c can be replaced with something in terms of a and D can be replaced with something in terms of B. So from here, we can get something obviously nicer, right? So let's go ahead and replace C with negative A and D with negative B. So that should give me 3A plus 3B equals 0. Oops, that's not 0 actually. This is supposed to be, I don't know why I wrote 0 because I was kind of used to it. It's supposed to be X minus 1 over X, not 0 because we're adding these two equations. There you go. It's x minus 1 over x. I'm like used to making everything 0. Great. So now we are getting the sum of three uh, a, a plus b from here. So let's go ahead and take out that 3 and then make a common denominator on the right hand side. That's going to give me x squared minus 1 over x. If you divide both sides by 3, then you're getting a plus b equals x squared minus 1 over 3x. That's another equation which is good to have. Now, I got the value of a plus b, so if I can get another equation that has a and b in it, then I could possibly use it to solve for a or b, right? So here's, this is what I need. Going back to the first equation, which was 3a plus b plus c equals x. So I'm going to use that one. 3a plus b plus c equals x. And remember, I was telling you that you are able to replace C with negative A. So let's go ahead and do it here. Let's replace C with negative A. And this is going to give us another equation in A and B. And that's going to look like 2A plus B equals X. Fairly simple, right? So we got two equations in A and B only. 
now we can go ahead and solve for A and B. But my goal is to solve for A, which I'll tell you why, and then uh, I don't really care about B. Okay, now, from these two equations, I can just, you know, subtract, negate, whatever, so on and so forth. But I could also do the following, which is kind of fun to do. 2A plus B can be written as A plus A plus B equals X. And I already know that A plus B is equal to X squared minus 1 over 3X. So to find A, all I have to do is subtract this from X and I'll be done. So A equals X minus X squared minus 1 over 3X. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and simplify this expression. Okay, let's see what this gives us. So if I simplify this expression, I should be getting something like a equals 3x squared, making a common denominator, and then subtracting the my, uh, difference, so it's going to be negated, minus x squared plus 1 over 3x. And if you simplify this, a equals 2x squared plus 1 over 3x. Now what is a and why did I go for a? Well, a is the first letter, that's why I went for it. But let me tell you that a is equal to f of negative x. It's not f of x, so I'm not finding the answer right away. But that's okay. Finding f of x from f of negative x is a piece of cake, isn't it? All we have to do is replace x with negative x. Great. Let's go ahead and do it now. So our goal was to solve for f of x, remember? And here you can tell that y x should not be 0, right? Because we have an x in the denominator. So if you replace x with negative x, in this expression right here, you get f of x as, obviously when you do that, you're going to be getting 2 times negative x squared plus 1 divided by 3 times negative x. But the top is even, so you're going to get the same thing from there, but you're going to get a negative 3x. So let's go ahead and multiply both the top and the bottom by negative 1. And let's write this as negative 2x squared because this is going to become 2x squared plus 1 divide by negative 3x, but that doesn't look very good. So let's go ahead and write it this way, negative 2x squared minus 1 over 3x. And this is going to give me basically the value of f of x, which is what I was looking for. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.